2019, it was decided that General Hardware Border Morris and Oak Apple Morris would co-host the 2020 Midwest Morris Ale. Oak Apple had hosted ales in the past. This would be General Hardware's first time hosting an ale. I've been on the team for as long as the team has been going, so I don't really know how long that's been. It's about 20 years or so, I think. Um, and right now, I am just a dancer, but I used to be the, the squire. This is going to be interesting because it's going to be the uh, uh, first uh, time that we have uh, uh, hosted the ale uh, with General Hard as General Hardware. And we've had, uh, it's going to be the first time that we're working this closely with the team with Madison to have things, uh, right, to try and host this. And so I'm, I'm interested to see how, how things go, what we go up with. I've done this for more than half, half my life, and there's a reason. It's just, uh, it gets me out there and moving my body, and uh, I just love the tradition and the folks that I dance with, and, uh, and the music. I've got that uh, buckle dragging you know, 2-4 beat in my bones here. I didn't kill my wife! <laughs> I have been either groupie or affiliate, um, or actually on the team for um, at basically as long as I can remember. What about the, the ale, and how do you feel about that? I am very impressed. Despite the fact that this group is made up of a lot of very competent people, we present incompetence in an incredible way. Um, part of it is an act, I promise that part of it's an act, but it is incredible how you can have, you know, doctors and, um, like, you know, executive directors and all that sort of thing come together and create just, like, a complete chaos of, um, very goofy people. Um, so it's, you know, cool and nice to see that the competence that exists outside of the group actually sometimes manifests inside the group as well. I'm impressed and enthused. Why did you want to do more singing? Oh, well, I was a young human watching other people get to stomp around and whack sticks together and I couldn't. Um, so I feel like that was kind of the initial pull, um, you know, stomping around and smacking sticks. Um, <laughs> but it, it's kind of grown into more of an appreciation for like the group and the community. Um, and with any sort of thing like this, with any sort of folk art, I think that it's incredibly important to keep it going. Just like sort of the feeling of like, okay, I'm doing a dance now that's been around since, you know, for hundreds of years, it's been around since Shakespeare, and we're we're just we're just doing it for fun, you know, in outside of a general hardware store in middle of nowhere, Wisconsin, and it's you know it, it's a nice feeling of connection on top of just sticks. <laughs> Okay, we're rolling. 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 I'm looking forward to, I don't know, like getting to know the Madison team a bit better and just everything about the ale um, that I look forward to in the past, the dancing, the people, the environment, so all of it, I guess. So going back a little bit, you and Rin were yes. the first female members of That's general right. hardware because this used to be an all-male team mm -hmm. uh, for many many years and so what if any thoughts do you have about that what do you think about that um i feel like it's definitely something interesting to talk about and to bring up in our team's history um i feel honored to be on the team and to be with the Morris community and it was great to join with one of my friends we've been watching the team for years and we're like well I want to do that so when we got the chance that was that was pretty cool and I'm glad to have been given that opportunity to dance with everybody because it's great I just think the ale's going to be a blast and the whole community is awesome and I'm just looking forward to it
General Hardware. And I've been on it since, I think, 2001, 2002. Whenever General Hardware started, I was a few months after that. Three years in California where I, where I taught Morris Dancing to my students, but did not uh, actively participate in a team. How do you feel about uh, organizing the 2020 AL? This is a first for General Hardware. I think it's about time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think we, we rely on the ability that the Bells and MTM have and other teams of organizing and, you know, we can do our part. We've organized a day of dance here in Menominee. Big event, one day, but this is stepping it up a little. This community is so welcoming and we've felt nothing but connection from people in the community that we... Uh, it makes it so that it's not so daunting to host because people are, are very, you know, everyone is positive, everyone that I've met, you know, and, and so you know that if you're hosting, you're going to get support, both moral and, and actual support in, in doing what needs to be done. How many people on General Hardware right now? <laughs> I don't know. I think we, we could feel 12 dancers if everybody yeah. showed up. We could do a 12-person a Evesham. That would be fun. used to dance with uh, Minnesota Traditional Morris uh, and Ramsey's Braggarts in the, in the cities. And uh, I got married uh, here about 23 years ago. And uh, we moved out to uh, Western Wisconsin because that's where uh, my wife Sarah was uh, doing an internship and we were going to start our own uh, farm, our own CSA. And so for a while there, I was still making MTM practices. I'd drive in and, and We'd sit down, we'd have a practice, we'd have a beer, and then it'd be a long drive back. I finally decided, you know, it's not, uh, this is really kind of hard to do. It, uh, uh, it, it was uh, taking a little bit too much out of me. So I said, I'm going to see if I can start it out here in rural Wisconsin. And so I got, uh, we didn't have the internet back then. We didn't have, I didn't have anything that I could show people out here about, about what this was like, um, except I had a videotape of, um, uh, I had a videotape of a Molly uh, dance team in England. I said, okay, so what I'd like to do is kind of like this, but it's not really like this. And, but I got a, I got a bunch of, I got maybe eight guys um, uh, together and gave them all a beer and we watched the video <clears throat> and I said, okay, what I'd like to do is kind of like this. It's really straightforward. It's really simple. It's really energetic. And, um, uh, and, I, and, uh, and so I, after I gave him the pitch, I intentionally started. I was going to go around the circle and ask who wanted to give this a try. I intentionally started with the guy I thought was most likely to say yes. And, after, <laughs> and he said yes. And after that, you know, it's kind of hard sometimes for, for in that situation for you to say no. And so that was my evil plot to get as many people as I could to join the team right off the bat. And so we started up and uh, we practiced in, uh, in secret for a couple of years. And we, uh, uh, we came to uh, uh, a tour uh, on uh, the winter ale. We, it was, uh, we were a surprise arrival. Uh, at a at a uh, at a uh, assisted living facility. What year do you remember? Oh, God, I don't know. That was, it was we've been we've been probably for about twenty years. So I'm guessing mm -hmm. that's like eighteen years ago or so. But I I really loved having a border team that dances in the summertime because you know, uh, 
the Twin Cities when we had, we did have a border team then, uh, but it would be just, uh, just during the winter time and kind of limited in terms of where you could dance. And so it's been really great to have a crew of people out you know, wanting to do this, uh, wanting to do this stuff during the summer time. Partner, number two, it's your turn. The inside. The inside, just about as far as we're going to be able to get so you would see what it's doing. Well, let all our hearts be joined as one. We'll end the day as we've begun. We'll end it all in pleasure. Right from the right to the right of the right from the right of the right. I'm looking forward to the aerial scene, meeting other choristers and, and doing dances. I, I really am excited for mass dancing because I feel like that's something that was a big part of like human history, but I've never done. Um, so uh, yeah. Co-hosting the 2020 Midwest Forest Sales. Um, getting to see people dance and dance in their different um, outfits they have, and each one brings a different uh, vibe to each thing. Um, and I guess that's mainly it, doing some dancing, but mainly getting to see everyone's costumes and dances. Morris is a lot of fun, and it's a lot more exercise than I thought it would be. So that's nice. But the coconut is too much. I think it's great. It's great. It's the 11 drive, 6 months, and then it's rebel. Oh, you're so mad, I believe. I started playing violin for General Hardware about, I would say, five, six years ago. And then I started to dance again, playing violin like four, three, and then I've just mainly danced with them since then. How do you feel about co-hosting the 2020 Midwest Morris album? I think it'll be really fun. I'm really excited to see what goes on behind the scenes there. And yeah, I think it'll just be a blast. Any last thoughts? I don't know. Nope. No last thoughts. <laughs> How do you feel about co-hosting the 2020 Midwest Morris sale? I'm slightly less terrified than I was before. I'm sure it's going to be a blast. Yeah. How do you feel about co-hosting the 2020 sale? Uh, it's going to be fun. It, it'll be a lot of work. And uh, I think it's going to be a wonderful experience for us. And you know, we've done the days of day of dance for years, so this is like just a giant version, but with a lot more. Half of it is, is, is the trip getting there, and half of it is being there, and the other, and then there's another half that transcends and brings you to another place. And yeah, so the, the process of the ale and us hosting it is an exciting one. Um, but in 2008, uh, I joined the team. Uh, it is, uh, Rick and Andy kind of brought me in. And, uh, you know, I'd seen the team dance out in town and they did a couple dances I really enjoyed and I wanted to learn them. and. Uh, a year later, I was doing them. I was always the guy who made mistakes, and uh, so it took me uh, left and right, you know, it just uh, one of those things. Um, it took me about 10 years to get to the point where I could feel comfortable doing the core dances without even really thinking about them. Uh, whereas like Steve made the comment once that it took him and me uh, a year to learn this one figure that took the new people, the younger people about two weeks. <clears throat> so young brains are good to bring into the team. And, um, speaking of that, when, uh, it, at that time, Phoenix would often come with me, uh, as a child to play with the other kids. Uh, Phoenix is an adult now and, and a full member of the team. 
uh, at the time, you know, there was a gaggle of kids that everyone would bring with, and um, they would all play while we danced. And eventually, uh, many of them did join the team. And uh, when we made the team uh, all inclusive in 2015, Phoenix joined. And at, at that time, it was so wonderful for me to be able to be in a set with my offspring, my, my kid, who is no longer a kid. But it was just, as a Morris parent, anyone out there who's a Morris parent will know what I'm talking about. It's this wonderful feeling of being able to dance with your kid or watch them dance and, and be part of, have them be part of this team and you be part of that team. And uh, it's this thing you do that you both love uh, together. So it's a wonderful experience. And uh, now, if I can only get back to where I'm supposed to be. Dick Riddle! I just grew up with these guys. It's been a while. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, just, I think like four years would be a solid guess, or like five, three, three years. I don't know. I've been dancing for three or four. <laughs> one day, my boss brought me in, and uh, Steve Horner at the time was part of the team, so um, he was very enthusiastic to get new members in, and I was very enthusiastic to do something more than watch TV and play video games. Mm -hmm. What do you look forward to about co-hosting the 2020 AL? Mm. Um, I don't know. Or don't look forward to it. <laughs> it sounds like it's going to be a lot of work and socially exhausting, but I really love the AL. Um, and it'll be fun for kind of our team to get, to lead something. Because we're such a small team, we don't really end up kind of on the face of things very often. So it'll yeah. be fun to be there. As a team, we have never done full blackface. In the United States, we have this long uh, tradition of white people blacking their faces up and running racist stereotypes in minstrel shows. And so, blackface, unacceptable. We knew that in 2000. And so, when, when I started uh, with the team, a few months after Rick had started the team, he had this idea that we could take wool felt and make it w cut out holes for our eyes and make our own masks that were correct to our faces. And we all did that. And very quickly we discovered that dancing with these kind of thick wool felt masks, there wasn't enough peripheral vision and it was hot. And, and it was just like, <laughs> there's, there's probably reasons why people have been blacking their faces. And uh, you know, our understanding was, okay, the blackface part comes from coal mining in Wales, and so there's a tradition of hiding your identity as a dancer because X, Y, Z, you know, like we're okay. Great. So, we took every el other element of the of the traditional border Morris costume and made it our own. So instead of bells, we have tin cans right. or aluminum cans with hardware or rocks in them. And instead of like a bowler hat with feathers on it, we've got feed caps and and such. And uh, 
it was a Wisconsin kit. So what was what would be Wisconsin? So we we took the same cork that you would use to black your face, and we would make like swirls and slashes and sort of like uh, marking our faces, and that that was kind of our set. You know, I, I think we did it because Rick was so into it. The facial decoration with the smudges for, I think, at least, I'm going to say 15 years, mm -hmm. was our standard. And it doesn't look like blackface when you put it on. It just looks like black marks on your face, but there's obviously plenty of white. Um, and yet, each person chose how much cork to put on. And in my case, I'm a person who touches their face, you know, and I would get, you know, rubbing my eyes, especially if there was like cork bits, and very quickly any sort of, any sort of day where we're dancing more than one or two dances, or we're out moving from place to place, my face would just kind of blend in and it would be like a gray face. And, <laughs> you know, and charcoal gray, and it's, it's indistinguishable from a deliberate black face. The call came to me to be Squire, and it became clear to me that blackface, even if it's not our intent, was, was not acceptable. And so I just said, okay, we're not blacking our faces. We can do anything else. And so Rick has tried, you know, gluing pieces of like shiny stuff on his face, uh, orange face. For, for Halloween, he did a skeleton face. You know, it's like, I love it. We're gonna come to something, but it's not gonna ever be blackface. You know, the thing that that sticks with me, Chris, is that it took us this long, you know, essentially 17 years uh, to decide this. 18, maybe? I think part of that is just, I'm gonna say, a lack of awareness of the impact of how what we're doing might be viewed. We run on our intentions. Our intentions are to put on a traditional Morris dance and, and that we think that should be enough. And that's part of being a white person is to, to have the privilege to think that our intentions are enough and that whatever our, the impacts are, they're not that. You know, someone just took it wrong. <laughs> and so it took us 18 years to say, okay, if someone's taking it wrong, maybe what we're doing is wrong. And it's not like anyone called us on it. It's just like we were finally like, okay, let's catch up to the rest of the world. Great. Well, my name is uh, Peter Tildy, and I first joined the uh, General Hardware Morris Group when my oldest daughter, Marie, was about seven or eight years old, 20 years ago, and I was bringing her to practice, and I'm sitting there watching everybody having fun and getting exercise, and I'm just doing nothing. So I thought, I might as well join these guys, and I sort of fell in love with the whole thing, and have been, you know, pretty much... Uh, a regular on the team ever since. I was a fiddler, a musician almost exclusively. I didn't really dance. And were you solo for a while or did you always have people with you playing? Uh, I played solo a little bit but mostly I had people with me. I started out playing with Olivia and then later on I played with my younger sister Ingrid. Sure. And we've had other musicians on there off and on.
How many years were you with the team? Oh gosh, lots. Because I started when I was really little, like about eight or nine, and played for a couple of years, stopped for a few years, and then uh, came back again. And oh gosh, it would have had to have been more than five years. Yeah. Gosh, what would it have been? Uh, might have been oh, even yeah. close to, let's say, not quite ten. Less than ten, more than five. Being so young, <laughs> how did? What were your impressions of the team? I mean, it's kind of an odd thing in some ways here in rural Wisconsin. <laughs> uh, when I started doing it, it didn't seem particularly odd to me, just because, frankly, odd was so normal to me as a young child that I didn't even <laughs> notice it. Uh, it was just, like, everything I did was a bit odd. I mean, our, our main holiday was the Renaissance Fair, and I, I spent more time with books than I did with people. So it was just like, okay, lots of grown men jumping up and down in a barn. This is normal? Like, it's just another Tuesday. Uh, following, uh, my oldest daughter being a violinist for the team, my second oldest daughter came along. And she was violinist for the team, also for three or four years. And then uh, after that, my youngest daughter, who's a cellist, which doesn't work out so well for Morris Dance musicianing, came along and at that point we integrated the team uh, so it was not just the men's team and she was a uh, dancer for about three years before she headed off to college so uh, had quite a family run so with general hardware having such a long history you've been through a lot with the team and one of the more notable ones was being one of the first uh, non-male members non-male presenting members on the team yeah it felt um so it, it was myself and one of our other dancers, Phoenix, and then I think there was Finley, um, were the uh, three um, members who were like open up to being able to join the team um, when we um, took down the uh, gender distinction. Um, I remember being very, very excited to learn all the dances that I'd seen my dad do. Um, like I mentioned, my two older siblings are violinists, but I'm a cellist, and that's not really the sort of thing that is particularly good for carrying around Renaissance fairs and that sort of thing. Um, I mean, that is what I do now, and not when I was, you know, 10. It was, like, incredibly, like, exhilarating and fun to be able to actually join the group. I felt kind of peripheral for a really long time, so it was really cool to be able to, like, join in and learn the dances and actually really feel like I was a part of it. The team used to be all male and now it's co. Yes. Uh, uh, anyone can join. Yes. Um, do you have thoughts on that? Like, when it was all male, were you ever thinking, gosh, I wish I could dance? But they won't let me, so I'll just play music. Or do you have any opinion on that at all when they switched? Uh, not really, to be honest. Uh, I mean, I, I suppose this is kind of a weird stance these days. But I think there is a place for organizations that are uh, all men or all women. I think for a while, General Hardware was an organization that was. Uh, all, all the dancers were men and that was fine and then it changed and became one where it was co-ed and that was also fine like I, I don't think it got better or worse it just became what it needed to be within the context of where the team was at that time so uh, I spent most of my time dancing more so I either caught and swelled or bored or dancing with just a just a, a, a an only male side um, and uh, uh, there are uh, things aren't quite so binary right now. Back then, we just we just uh, 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 thought in terms of uh, uh, male and female. Um, uh, and I'll talk about that as it as it was in the past. You know, with the recognition that things have changed.
I started the male team because that was the one I was most familiar with. I had dance with a college team, that's my first group, and uh, with uh, uh, Great Northern Border uh, uh, in the Twin Cities and with uh, Minnesota Traditional Morris in the Twin Cities. And those were all exclusively uh, male teams at the time that I was with them. Um, I had danced with Ann Arbor for a couple of years when I was in medical school and I was a mixed team. But I, um, I liked the, I liked dancing in a, a, a men's only team. And for me that was, um, a situation where I could be with other guys, I would dance with other guys, there was no other situation where I was dancing with only men, or, in my experience. Um, uh, I was in physical contact with other guys when we weren't trying to you know, like slam into each other uh, playing football. Um, and so it was, it was a, um, it was, a, it was a liberating experience. It was something that was different I was, and stood outside of uh, my experience of uh, being with men and being physical with men. So um, I wanted to continue on with that. Um, uh, and we did that for, I, I forget, it was probably, we were probably uh, men's only dancers for about, um, about six, seven, eight years. Uh, I'm just guessing. But we had women on the team. They were musicians, and uh, that was that was just because that was the only live music that we could find. Uh, uh, our other choice was to put a cassette in the tape player and dance to that. And there were members of the team, uh, but uh, they were they weren't dancers. The issue didn't come up until. Um, uh, uh, Finley, uh, one of uh, our younger members at the time, who was the same age as another young man, Carter, uh, and uh, realized that Carter was going to be able to dance with us, and they weren't. And so uh, uh, Finley said, you know, I think we ought to change this. And after going back and forth uh, about it, um, her father, Steve, agreed. He said, he said uh, either Finley gets to dance uh, or, uh, or I quit. And um, that was a tough decision. We went back and forth for a while. And it was not, I, I think we, when we finally made the decision to do that, it was not unanimous. I like how, as a group, we've been able to address this and still maintain our relationships uh, with each other. Um, there have been groups that have broken up over this issue uh, in the past, and we haven't, and that's you know, good for us. And since then, we've had, we continue to have just, oh, no, no, we've had, we've had both men and women play for us. Uh, um, and we've had, uh, uh, it's not been a, a single gendered dance team. And um, that's been the majority of my experience with general hardware. It's been something that um, is now the norm. It's something that uh, I enjoy. Uh, I, I do miss, for the reasons I mentioned, I do miss dancing with just guys. Um, but I also like to dance. And if we didn't have, we don't have enough guys to have just a team. Uh, 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 we've got um, uh, women that have added not just dance members just so we have physically have enough people doing the dance but um, I think they've added uh, their own perspective and their own view of the dance I think uh, it's um, they've contributed to uh, uh, to the team in, in many ways 
and in terms of you know how we do and what we do and where we do and when we do it. And, uh, so I'm I'm happy the way things turned out. I think it's just a great activity. I love the community spirit. I love the fact that we don't do it for money. We don't do it for anything other than the sheer pleasure of the whole thing and the opportunity to help build community and, and be part of our little cultural uh, life out here and to hang out with other Morris dancers who are always interesting people. What, if any, thoughts you have on uh, the team hosting the Dell? Well, I would hope we could do it. Um, that's been a little bit of a challenge for me personally to, to, to get to these of late for a bunch of reasons, mostly related to work and farm and all kinds of other stuff. But, uh, you know, I think, again, what makes this thing go is people take turns and throw in to do what has to be done to make it happen. So you know, if our turns around here and we can be helpful, uh, let's do it. I just hope we can, uh, you know, Morris on and, you know, the team keeps changing as people move in and out of it. And uh, we've got some wonderful young folks that have shown a great interest and been good dancers, and I think that's thrilling. So uh, I'm more than happy to you know, be part of that ongoing process. I would probably just add to it that I feel very lucky that even as I've kind of moved past the group, I've gone off to college um, and <laughs> um, you know I'm, I'm now in a different renaissance group which takes up a lot of my time but I still feel like accepted and um, like I'm part of the group I can still jump in for dances um, and yeah it's it's the sort of thing and the sort of the community that sticks with you so it was a a highlight and a staple of my life for years. I loved playing for the team. Uh, I, I loved going to the Ales. Uh, I, I met some really extraordinary people as a result of playing with the Morris dancers, and I'm still getting like ripple effects from the time I spent with General Hardware. Like so many of the things in my life right now are happening because of General Hardware. I met my bandmates because of General Hardware, uh, and. A, a lot of the people that I know, I know because of General Hardware. It's still a very significant part of the community I'm in now. You mentioned bandmates. Who do you play with now? I play with a band called Bardmageddon. Yay! <laughs> and we see them at Ren Fairs. Yes, yes. You can find us at various and sundry oh, Renaissance fairs. Oh, give them a plug. Go ahead. Give them, uh, give them the whole also on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs>
to the virtual AL, I'm like, oh, okay. I'm not interested in, in doing anything, but Chris, did you czar that? That was the czar, because I brought it to the board and uh, from Kurt's suggestion. The, Kurt. the nucleus, ground zero of all this, it really is Kurt's suggestion to do a virtual AL. And then to do something virtual, not to do a virtual AL, but something. something, and it came out of that. Yeah, and, it, and it, it really was like, that was like the first act of resistance. <laughs> everyone, when he said that at our team meeting, why I was so excited about it is because <coughs> everyone's mood just picked up, because yeah. we were all like, oh, no. Yeah, we're in a pandemic. And, and everyone just kind of, you know, no vaccine. saw the shoulders we could all die. And, <laughs> right. And and I was like, that's it right there. And so we came up with it as a proposal. And, and then we're like, by the next year, for sure, it'll be gone. But Bethel Horizons already had, mm -hmm. had a group yeah. for 2021. Right. And we're like, okay, well, we'll come to the camp, say, Yeah. Mm -hmm. Put down a deposit. We were going to invent a new ale at St. Camp St. Croix, which was different from other ales at Camp St. Croix because it was going to be a Wisconsin ale. We didn't get that far. We scouted locations, we paid the deposit, and we figured out that we couldn't do it. <laughs> which was too bad, but the right call. And then there was this low. And because almost by Memorial Day weekend, everyone on our team who had access to the vaccine was vaccinated. And we were doing outdoor summer practices. And my friend Reb Kildee, longtime Morris parent, was like, we can hug now, right? And it was like, oh, summer 2021, before the whatever variant came back, the Delta, Delta. <laughs> the breakthroughs. We were like, oh, we're all vaccinated. <laughs> and we had the Ren Fair, where so many other people were in that same thing in mid-July, and people came out. They were like, finally, we're out. And that was it. The pandemic was over. And then it wasn't. <laughs> in 2021, we had the Perseverance sale, which Thankfully, they had a little bit more time to plan. We canceled. Oh, no, no, we, we tried to have an ale here in Dodgeville in 2021, and that too did not work. Well, it was also going to be in yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's, that's right. But it, it, we started all over again in a whole new location. Take number two. <laughs> and a second ale. Still didn't work. Still didn't work. It was still canceled. At which point, we have Perseverance Ale. What did come of the Perseverance sale for General Hardware was meeting a Russian Morris team who was doing one of their dances. Happy Kelpie, a folk band and Morris dance team based in St. Petersburg, was the only Russian Morris dance team at the time. A video of them performing Katie Cruel, a dance choreographed by Rick Nogler, was spotted by a General Hardware member. Happy Kelpie had learned Katie Cruel by watching a video of a British team that learned it from Rick. Contact was made and Happy Kelpie was invited to the virtual ale. Here is the moment that they met Rick. To meet the creator of a dance they had happened upon and loved enough to learn was a very moving moment for Happy Kelpie. The sheer magic of meeting a team thousands of miles away in Russia who in some happenstance found Rick's dance and liked it enough to do it almost made up for the lack of personal connection. But connection there was, and it could not have happened without the virtual ale.
I'm really happy we had the virtual ales, obviously, and I feel like we, we got to do a lot of really interesting things with the virtual ales and try a lot of new ideas, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how we can kind of integrate a lot of that stuff. We had, like, the panels and stuff, and I feel yeah. like we've been having a lot of good conversations yeah. about inclusion and everything, and I think taking that going forward, I think is going to be um, a really great addition to the ale and just talking about what it means to be a community. Oh, fruit snack! Bethel is back on the table, and they've held our reservation this whole time, and, you know, been very gracious, and we're like, okay, now we're going to go back and plan a Wisconsin Ale in Madison. Rick and Casey, as Ale Tsars, are like, oh, we need to think of all the different things. Like, this is like a completely different ale, a new ale. Like, we can't do this tour, we can't get on a bus, what are we going to do about COVID testing, and you know, what are our policies, and this required endless Zoom meetings. <laughs> endless. Zoom meetings. The thing with the endless Zoom meetings is probably about a third of the conversations that we had were like necessary conversations to planning the sale, but we didn't know which third going into it. <laughs> so I'm just like, oh, okay. The meetings, we would repeat like three times the same thing, and Spider would be like, okay, you know, <laughs> timetable. You know, and part of it is the personalities of the people, and part of it is us trying to, to be helpful and weigh in and think well about this when, you know, the people in the Madison group, they knew all like the, the details here in a different way. But those Zoom meetings, I'm sure, like I said, they, they were about two-thirds too long, but we don't know which two-thirds. Yeah. Right. <laughs> There's so much that was different. Yeah. And how I had to consider things. I mean, there were the ramifications of having to deal with COVID um, had to do with had to do with the cost of the ale, and had to do with, uh, where the housing was, and what, what happened with people who arrived in an airplane. And, and the tours. And, uh, and you know, how often do we test? And, uh, and do we follow the CDC guidelines in some situations, not in others? And so there was there was so much of that that things kept on having to be thrown into the air. And again, I, I I think those two thirds of you know not having you know, the two thirds of the conversations that we didn't need to have. I think we actually had to have them just because we right because we had the judgment is made one of one of retrospect. When you're dealing with something that's so new, you need to keep on tossing stuff. Yeah, and that's why it's called the winnowing. You know? Yeah, and we came to consensus really well. Yeah. This figure could either have one hope was regained for another try at an in-person ale. The 2022 Midwest Morris Ale was given a go by the board to be the first in-person ale in three years, unofficially dubbed the Suicide Ale. And we turn, and then we step confidently through, we get to our spot, we turn, and then, so there's that pausing that gives it like that, the home to the, to the strike. Oh, it's you, I know you. Yeah. It's our friend, it's our friend! We are on our way. She did not look as cheery as the other. You made it! Boy. We made it! <laughs> well, you know, like, like when we were out there doing the mass dancing uh, on Saturday, I, I thought of this as sort of like an act of resistance. Like, like I, I think, you know, 
this is like the start of the, the next section of ales that the series can grow from here. Anyway, because I think it's because I haven't put everybody who's here made an effort to get here. Yeah. So it's like more dancing as, as resistance. And then here in 2022, we finally got to have our physical ale. So third time's the charm for real this time. Um, can I, I just want to point out some of the ale czars real quick. I've got Casey Gerhardt right in front of us. amount of work over the last three years and as much as it was really cool to go to virtual events and get to like see people and hear from people virtually it's different to get to be here and talk to all your friends and go like oh right this is why I did all that. and this is why I did all those policy debates and went to all those meetings and answered all those questions the first night we came in and I got to go to pick up dancing on Friday night and I got to feel that energy in the room again I was like oh right that's why I did this to get the people I had seen working their butts off during those three years get to dance or sing or share something cool they've learned in the last three years that I would never have heard about in a Zoom meeting <laughs> and just being happy to see their breath. Yes. You know, yeah. like when I got out of the car, I, I got a hug from them. And I was like, fantastic. You know, like, it's so cool to see people. So it was, it means... It was worth doing all that. <laughs> and it's really cool to be back in the community like this. Two more. As we were driving up, we were going, okay. This is the turn, you gotta look for it, we gotta look for the signs, you gotta see it. Oh, there's the sign, there's Bethel Horizons. And just the closer we got, just a bigger grin on our faces. And then we walked up and we, we got there, we drove up and we stopped. And it was just these faces that we recognized that we hadn't seen. And I think Rick's comment of, you got 15 minutes and we can hug. And there was, there was something about that that was just joyful and gleeful of, of like, okay, let's do this. Let's get our tests done. Let's come back negative, you know. And there's, like, that apprehension of, like, what if I test positive, you know. Um, and, then it did, and, then, and then, yeah, the relief when it doesn't happen. And you get to continue on and 
and see everyone. Um, and yeah, the, it, for me that was like, okay, I am at the Midwest Mall sale. It has started. Safety and safety crossed with you know with 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 cost and people's intention to come. You know, there's so many things that you want to do for folks. You want to have this be a, a place where they can come and see folks. They haven't seen for three years, but you want to do it safely. And you want to do it so that people can afford it. And um, that was that was. Um, it was hard. I'm not sure I'd say it was frustrating, mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't easy coming up with, with the answer. I just had to say, well, we're just going to go with this. Yeah. I mean, we didn't know how many people would come based on all the things on the, like, mm -hmm. this is what you need to be able to do in order to come. Yeah. And when we hit 100, it's like, high right. fives all around. Right. Yeah. It's going to happen. <laughs> I know there was that, that last minute yes. push. There was like, you know, 63 people registered. And there was like four or five days left like, in. And, uh, you know, so I know we had like only two of our five people in our family were registered. So like, yeah, let's get registered. Yeah. You know, and then I know some other people on the team that got registered from MTM. You know, so it pretty much doubled in about... Three yeah. days. I think we, I mean, before it was, it was always sort of a given how, you know, that we have just a ton of people coming in. We just had to work out logistics of you know, how we move people around and how many buses we need. This was just about how a lot of people come. And can we do that and still take care of people well and be good hosts? And there's the, the finding the, the balance between making it safe for people and making sure that the people who come have a good time. Because if we said, everybody can come, but you have to just keep your mask on and you can't leave your room, um, <laughs> <laughs> that would never been nearly as much fun. <laughs> so trying to find a way to make it be an ale. And also safe enough that, I mean, a lot of people said that the only reason they came was because we had good COVID practices in place and they felt comfortable coming. Yeah. And otherwise they wouldn't have. What is the most fun? Being here? Yeah, just being here. Yeah, being here. <laughs> when yeah. we got here? Yeah. Or when people started. Oh, go ahead. Or just when people started. Yeah, that was really fun being at the arrived. registration tent. And, and having people come and just us being able to show delight at seeing them and them having 15 minutes to just like converse with each other and kind of transition into being delightedly received. The other thing for me that was fun was this planning process started with 
in Rick's house where where Oak Apple came up and we had a really lovely potluck and had some great envisioning conversations and then all the Zoom meetings and, and then actually Rick and Katie went down and visited, you know, so there's a lot of like, we got to know these guys and some of them we only knew as heads on screens until like, we're like, oh, you're Claire. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> when did it hit you, Rick? When did Joy hit you? Oh, well, it was the same, it was me, the same people drive up. Yeah. And, and, and again, you said that the 15 minutes that it takes for their, their um, COVID test to run. Perfect. Well, yeah, right, it, just, it was just a great chance for people just to be out there and if they're not busy right away because there's not, they can't go in and unload the, you know, unload the trucks and just, you're out there, you might as well talk to someone who you're with. <laughs> yeah. And just, it was just, a, it, was, it was actually, was, I, there was something that was very attractive about that part of arriving. So you arrive and you just, just, just sit there and circling in for a bit, you know, not rushing off. I think the first no, figure is milling about. For me, even if we don't have a COVID test sometime in the future, which I can't imagine when that will be, but it could happen, um, I think we should still have that <clears throat> 15 minutes of small groups before everybody just set a timer. <laughs> yeah, all right, you can leave. <laughs> a, new, a, new, a new ritual. <laughs> I can see you. I can mostly see you. You look very mysterious. <laughs> well, with COVID, I'm certainly uh, akin to the, the idea that we shouldn't be all getting together, especially when a lot of people aren't vaccinated and and all that. So I could definitely see postponing, you know, two ales. For me, that was not a big deal. Uh, but just in general, ales, I, I look forward to ales uh, all year long, just to get you know a lot of a lot of the same people and a lot of the different people together in in one one weekend. Uh, you build a lot of relationships. Um, it's a lot like uh, I do a lot of, of directing of plays in small town community theaters, and it's, it's a lot like that where where during the rehearsals and during the shows you form the cohesive family as it were uh, and then you know after the show's over boom they all disappear and you do it all over again next year and that is sort of what this is except you get people coming back year after year uh, and it's just a great way to spend a weekend uh, with with friends um, I remember the first first ale I came to uh, I was actually married to a Morris dancer. I wasn't a Morris dancer to begin with, and mm. it was kind of boring. Yeah. <laughs> it was kind of boring for me. I mean, so the next year I decided, well, I got to join this. Uh, and ever since then, I've been having having more and more fun uh, with, with the dancing, and then also picking up the, the melodeon squeeze box to play. I would say thanks to General Hardware and, and Oak Apple for putting this on. It was not not easy, and, but it's well. Well appreciated. So, how does it feel? You know what? We had a, a five, four, four stars trying to leave our house today to get here. So we were probably one of the last arrivals. But it was, it was definitely good to be here after so many years. Um, I'm tired of doing things online, whether for work or for other things. Uh, it's just the, it's the, the in-person interaction is really what it's about, to be able to, to engage with people and get the energy. You can't have that whenever you're, you're not getting that face-to-face -face interaction. And, uh, so it, it's very good to be here. So I'm, I'm glad we were finally able to, to have you guys hosted and have it in person. But I think looking at the schedule tomorrow, there'll be a lot of time just for, for one-on-one -on -one interaction or small group interactions, um, very relaxed. But I think that's, you know, you're getting to know people again after a couple years. And it, some of the people you only see, you know, once, maybe twice a year at an event, um, and that might give you a, a little deeper connection with them after a weekend like this. I started dancing in 2007. 
It was 2007. So it's been a while. And for the first two years, I didn't attend any of the Midwest War Sales. Because it was more of a, that was a family camping event for us. A weekend with some other families. And I was the only one in the family who was dancing, so it wasn't, it wasn't really a thing for us to attend as a family. And then a few years afterwards, my wife started dancing and my kids started dancing with, um, um, there was a kids team in Minneapolis that was being taught. So we had you know, four of us who were participating and then started attending the Ales. So my first Ale was actually in Colorado. Was the kids team uh, the Brackleberry? No, actually it was Northern Lights. Northern Lights. So Jarrett Phillips was teaching a, a kids team. And there were kids that were from you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old. And then some of those would go on to Brackleberry. Like my daughter, she moved up into Brackleberry. And my son, when he was about the size of MTM's Big Sticks, he started dancing with MTM. And now to, to see how he's learned and grown, he's, he's, he's one of the most graceful dancers on the team. So but that's kind of how it started for us, was, was really just that one connection and then it sort of spread throughout. Um, but it's just a, it's a great community be, to be part of. So we really enjoy it. It's something to look forward to. And then sometimes it's, you know, the, it gets to be a long weekend and travel and things like that, but um, it's always worth it. Oh, it really yeah, is. that's right, that's nice. So, what, how does it feel to be back? It, it feels interesting. It, um, I think, in general, it feels good. Um, it's, it's, the atmosphere is definitely different from, from Virtue Ale. I will say that one of the things that I kind of forgot um, during the Virtue Ales is how long it sometimes takes to get from one place to another place. <laughs> it's like, with the Virtue Ales, you want to do pickup dancing? Click a button, you're there. You want to switch to singing? Click a button, you're there. Part of the experience is the crossing paths with people on your way yeah. from one place to another, and also the kind of the personal reflection, I guess, during that time. You get a bit of solace out in nature as well. <clears throat> what I see is people who came and did the pickup dancing on Zoom over the last two years were really desperate for some dance connection. Uh, and and people come here and there's a lot of energy tonight. Doing an interview, so uh, that's okay. Weird. I was gonna say, you can say weird things. How does it feel to finally be back in person doing an interview? Weird as anything. Weird as anything. Um, it's, it's both. The neural pathways are there, they're hardwired, it feels like, oh yeah, this is what we always do. But it also and feels new. It also feels new and it also feels like, wait, I'm allowed to be face to face with people like this? Is that okay? What does it mean to be a Morris dancer? And then you just slowly like pair words off it. You know, what does it mean to Morris? And then you know, it's what does it mean? mean? And then what? What? <laughs> 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 <laughs>
some of the more physical things that were new to the sale, like lights for outside and <laughs> all these things that we needed extra to run an ale this time. So thank you extra to John Stop. Really, where it came down to is, we did all we could that, that we could conceivably even possibly do. And we all know it's a risk. We all know, even though we did all these protocols, there's still a risk, but we're gonna do it anyway, because we really need it. I need it. We, we, we need to come together and do this. We need to come together and see each other and be as safe as possible and understand the risks. And there are many people who have opted not to come. Hi, uh, yep, yep. And what, what? Yep. this was from the beginning, we always called it kind of the compromise ale. Like, we're, we're not all going to get what we want. It's not a normal ale. Well, behind your back, we're calling it the suicide ale, but you know. Right. So here we go, <laughs> dive in. But you know what? We, we, these are the folks who could do it. There are folks who couldn't or didn't want to. What can we do? Cross exactly. our fingers. Crossing our fingers. There it is. Next year. I can hew, boys, I can hack it out. I can hew the coal, I can dance and shout. I can hew, boys, coal that's black and fine. I'm a collier lad working down the mine. Oh, I likes my whiskey and I likes my beer. I'll drink 14 pints and I'll not feel queer. I can hear my liquor good as any man And I'll dance and sing as long as I can I can hear boys, I can hack it up I can hear the coal, I can dance and shout I can hear boys, coal as black and fine I'm a collier lad working down the mine He's 14, he's a strapping lad And he'll go to the pit soon Just like his dad And when Friday comes He'll pick up our pay And we'll drink together To round out the day I can hew, boys I can hack it out I can hew the coal I can dance and shout I can hew, boys Coal as black and fine I'm a collier lad working down the mine. Oh, and when, when I'm dead, oh, I know full well I'm not go to heaven, I am bound for hell. And my pick and shall old Nick he will admire, and he'll set me to hew in coals for his own hellfire. I can hew, boys, I can hack it out. 
I can hear the call, I can dance and shout. I can hear boys call as black and fine. I'm a collier lad working down the line. I can hear boys, I can hack it out. I can hear the call, I can dance and shout. I can hear boys call as black and fine. I'm a collier lad working down the line. I think we should do it again. Sure. <laughs> Are you happy? Uh, yeah, but I came that way too. <laughs> I'll be happier after that free drink at lunchtime.